Hey folks, I'm uh, using up the rest of that cheap cauliflower I got this week. I'm going to make a quick cauliflower cheese and show you guys how I do that. Pretty straightforward stuff. It's actually, curiously, the same way that I make my um, cheese dip, nacho cheese sauce kind of approach. Uh, in the pan I've got about so four tablespoons of vegetable oil. You could easily use butter in this particular case. Uh, you're going to make a roux basically, uh, so any kind of fat will work. I just happen to be low on butter and overstocked in canola oil, so that's what I'm using tonight. If I can get my knife out, I'm going to do a little bit of garlic. What I've done in the background, uh, just like I did the other night with my Adu Gobi experiment, um, I blanched briefly the cauliflower in boiling salted water, maybe three, four minutes tops. Um, you don't want to cook it all the way through because you're going to finish this in the oven. But blanching it takes the edge off of cooking, especially the thicker parts of the stock. It, it, it um, helps get those cooked evenly. Um, uh, which reminds me, I should go turn on the oven. I'm going to put the oven on, say, 375. Let that start to heat up as this oil comes up to temperature. Get rid of the gnarly bit of the end of the garlic. fingers tucked in. Just mince that fresh garlic down. That's ready to go. I don't want to put that in yet though because we don't want the garlic to burn. I'm on a, let's call this a solid medium heat. Uh, I'm gonna make a little spice blend. I do a lot in uh, a lot in my cauliflower cheese. There's a lot of different spice combinations but the one I quite like is a decent dose of cumin seed, decent dose of fennel seed, not quite as much of the fennel seed because it can overpower, a good healthy shot of chili flakes because that's just the kind of guy I am, uh, and of course I'm going to do uh, salt, but the other uh, flavor in there is a bit of Dijon. This is my homemade Dijon. I'm right at the end of this jar, so basically I put in some extra liquid, some extra water just to rinse out the jar well, but a good dose of Dijon mustard in just about any cheese sauce, whether you make a mac and cheese or cauliflower cheese or, or uh, just any kind of cream based sauce works really, really well. And also for the milk cream component, I'm using evaporated milk. Evaporated milk, since it's already cooked a little bit um, at the factory, is a lot more stable. It's a lot less likely to split on you in a sauce. So evaporated milk is a great choice for making cream sauces. I'm also going to do just a tiny little bit of cheese. You're going to be amazed. This is, uh, here, I'll tell you how much this is. This is 70 grams of cheese, which is, you know, barely over two ounces. And I'm not going to do uh, much more of that because I don't need it. That cream sauce, if you flavor and spice the cream sauce well, you don't have to put in heaps and heaps and heaps of cheese, although that is delicious. And yes, you could you could certainly shred this down, but I happen to know that I'm going to get enough um, temperature on the sauce to melt it, so it's not really a problem just to do a quick chunk on it. I uh, need to grind the spices down. Oh, you know what I forgot to put in there is a little tiny bit of uh, black pepper as well. I can find it. Just a few little extra pe black peppercorns in there. It's a different kind of heat compared to the chilies. A fruit fly in here. I don't know where it came from. It's freezing outside, so it must have escaped from some hiding place in the kitchen. All right, so that's relatively hot. You can see that it's uh, that's a little steam coming off, but it's relatively hot and smoking, uh, not, not quite smoking, I should say. Go into the oil with the spices because I want them to bloom nicely, but I don't want them to burn, which is why I pulled it off of the heat. 
In goes some of the, oops, excuse me, the uh, garlic. And almost immediately in goes the flour to calm it down. And just a little bit more in there. I had five or six tablespoons worth of oil in there. That is a very spicy base for a roux. Maybe I had six tablespoons in there. There we go. That's better. And you know, I, I always see in, res in uh, recipes, uh, cook the flour until the raw flavor is gone. I have no clue what that means. You, when you make a roux, you cook the flour. And oddly enough, the longer you cook the flour, the less thickening power it has. That's just, uh, roux 101. So I, I want to cook it long enough to, to bring the flavor together, but I want to cook it until it's just completely uh, peanut butter or chocolate color, uh, like you would do in some uh, Cajun Creole cuisines. And now, there's a bit of thickening power in there. Jeez, I just, why in the world? I must have put in a whole lot more oil than I thought. There we go. I think I finally got it. In goes my uh, Dijon mustard. I'm going to have to make another batch of that soon. But that video is already out on my channel. Now well, we're getting some thickening power in there. In goes my evaporated milk. That's probably a cup, cup and a quarter that I've got in there. Whisk this to smooth. Just a little bit more. just a tiny bit longer because you can already tell that it's thickening up nicely. In fact, I'm going to probably grab a little bit of water. Basically, I had too much oil in there to start, so I made too much roux. That's all right. More roux means more sauce. Now I'm going to want to taste for salt. Which it doesn't have any in it right now. I thought there might have been a little bit left over from the Dijon, but uh, what is that? A good teaspoon's worth? Put that in and check it again. Yep, that's about right. Because remember, I'm going to season a whole big plate of cauliflower with this sauce. It's a little bit on the salty side as it sits in the pan, but that's okay. In goes that cheese, and now I just want to cook until that cheese melts. Clear the decks while it does that.
here is my baking tray of blanched cauliflower. You could absolutely do this with blanched potatoes, blanched, any kind of vegetable that you want to. Uh, it's, it's not technically a gratin, but let's call it a gratin. This sauce works perfectly well on top because what I'm going to do after I get the sauce where I want it, pour it over the top, put a little bit of um, toasted breadcrumbs on top and throw it in the oven until I get nice and bubbly on the bottom. I'm also going to put in just a little bit of onion. That's about right. If I can keep it from flying all over the place. Uh, let's give it a little more. Just going to mix this in as best I can. It'll take at 375, 3, uh, 375 or 400, whatever you want to cook at, um, maybe 20, 25 minutes because. Um, everything's already partially cooked. Of course, the sauce is almost ready to go, and the cauliflower is, is halfway there because of that blanching. Usually, I, when I do it with potatoes, it takes a little bit longer, more like 40 minutes with potatoes. But... Okay, loosen the sauce just a little bit more. This is actually uh, some of the cooking liquid from the cauliflower, so it's got a little bit of flavor to it as well. We're almost there. One pulled out chunk of cheese. These uh, breadcrumbs, all I did here, I melt a little bit of butter, throw in some breadcrumbs. I keep a bag of them in my freezer from leftover bread ends. Toasted them down, a uh, little bit of salt and pepper. If you wanted to put in some Parmesan, those are great, but wait till it cools down after you've toasted them to put some Parmesan in. Uh, you could put in rosemary or any other herb that you had available. Those are nice, but that's just going to be a crusty topping on the top. Of course, that's where toppings go. Uh, it'll crisp up a little bit, and a little bit more, I should say, in the oven. I think I'm there. Just taste for consistency. Yep, we're in good shape there. Like I say, just a little extra salty in the pan because it's got a flavor all of that cauliflower. Because I started with so much roux, I've probably got enough for two pans worth, but there we go. You on top of the cauliflower this way. Yeah, I totally made too much, but that's all right, because I've still got extra cauliflower left over. This will be cauliflower cheese for tomorrow. Curiously enough, this sauce, all on its own, is pretty good over toast. And if you wanted to do something kind of like a, a Welsh rarebit, Welsh rabbit, rarebit, however you pronounce it in your neighborhood, you could add a couple eggs to this, uh, whisk them in, uh, whisk them separately, temper them a bit, whisk them in here, put that over toast and throw it under the broiler, and basically you've got a Welsh rarebit made uh, with the exact same process and same sauce. So now for my crumb topping. One thing I will say about the uh, about the 
breadcrumbs is always toast them right before you use them. If you toast them more than you know an hour or two ahead of time, they get they lose their oomph, they lose their crunch. So these literally just came off my other burner behind me. And that is all we're going to do for cauliflower cheese. This goes in the oven, as I say, anywhere from uh, 25 to 30 minutes at 375. Uh, if you want to see what it looks like, the recipe is already out on my website. Just go up to the blog up there in the corner. You can see not only the recipe, but also uh, the end results, shall we say. And if you like this kind of live stream, subscribe, because before long, when I get all these technical details worked out and I get a better mic, I'm going to start scheduling honest-to-goodness cooking events as opposed to just whatever I'm cooking for dinner tonight. So there you go. I'm Mr. Spork. These are Mr. Spork's hands now. It's the end of the recipe. You're into the oven with this recipe. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.